Joe here. We are Grizzly HQ in our new office. Well, our freshly painted office in uh, Grizzly colors, obviously. Um, quick update. We have got two very nice 36 foot flatbeds. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit of a walk around, show you all the specs on them. They are heading off to Denmark on Monday. It's currently the 3rd of August. We give a big shout out to Nicholas Anderson. He is the customer of these trailers and he actually rang me one day and I was shot blasting away and I saw Denmark come up on my phone and I thought, here we go. <laughs> And I didn't answer it first time. Well, I did. Maybe I did answer it, and I couldn't really hear. And then I explained I can't really talk at the moment. I was fully suited in blasting gear, and I called him back. And then it ended up in a sweet deal for two of these uh, really nice-looking trailers. I do like my black and orange, and I may have gone a bit to town on the old black and orange on these. Even my office is black and orange. <laughs> have got what we supply standard 45 degree swivel hitch bolt on so that can be changed into a spoon hitch we have the manual fold down shoe we've got a sprung drawbar rated for four and a half ton and we also have a hydraulic shoe on this one so these trailers can be coupled up to a tractor unit and be towed on a uh, clever hitch on the back of the chassis uh, air and oil brakes load sensing obviously wouldn't have without uh, we've got two main spools for the hydraulic shoe underneath and hydraulic brakes and then that's stowed away on our nice little stainless pack look at these god I still love those moving on this trailer was specced with a heavy duty chassis this is basically our low loader chassis. We have a 8mm thick drawbar with 10mm bracing on the sides. We have an 8mm thick chassis all the way down through. And we have 4.5mm thick checker plate floor on the top. And the ATB80 cross members which are on every weld joint. They are 5mm thick can't really see on the camera and the 80 to 40 cross members are only 3 mil just to keep the weight down all our bale trailers are fitted with PFC ah what's the size 65 mil by 125 mil channels reason for that is you can strap anywhere on the trailer on there and your strap doesn't ruin the paint on the side rail I think a lot of manufacturers use angle iron and you've got a strap on the bottom side and then the paint gets taken off of the side and that just bugs me. Our mirrored stainless anti-scratch guards. So a strap can be hooked onto there, rubs against the trailer, doesn't take the paint off and basically utilizes a flatbed trailer so you can pull on a diagonal and pull things Tight. Just utilizes the uh, trailer a little bit more. They look quite smart too, don't they? With the mirrored. Hello. All our normal Grizzly finishing touches with the high vis tape. And we've got high vis orange vinyl on these just to break everything up. Ooh. LED neon front marker light. Around the side then. Our wheel wind fields with indicating marker lights all the way down the trailer. Our usual. 127 round beam commercial axles 
We're running on 445, 45, 19 and a half mini super singles. Gone with the high vis orange pinstripes on the wheels. Also sprayed the rims black. So these trailers were spec'd with three and a half meter aluminium ramps. These are rated for seven ton over two meters um, per couple. Back end, this is where the ramps clip in. I was told by our customer that they don't require plates in Denmark on the back, but I had to put something there. So we've gone with their company name and I've mixed it up a bit, it looks good. Got the twin guarded strobe lights in the back tailboard and in there, galvanized light brackets and they are all laser cut to match up with our LED dynamic lights. Got our galvanized fold away rear bumper that can be set at different angles and for transport we can fold these right up around tuck them up there and then these both both of these trailers can be stacked up then and the back bumper can go over the front of the headboard coming around this side then we've got the manual handbrake uh, we've got our strap storage box And our shunt valve is up the front, easily accessible if you need to use it quickly. Fully welded all the way around the edge and across every checker plate join. So we put the drains, four drains, up in the front here just to take the water away. All the sheets are lined up. <laughs> there aren't too many manufacturers that do that. The trailer actually has a bed height of 960 mil off the floor, so you can easily load these four bales high. They look class, don't they? With the black and orange. Got the Heath Super Grabs up on top. These are going off to Denmark with the trailers. I am actually really looked at these Heath Grabs. They look pretty well built. Substantial things. I know Heath makes them pretty good stuff like with their bale chasers and things they got a good name for that had a pretty interesting email come back from llama and I <laughs> the price is just crazy I it would be so good to do it but just the floor space is 20 odd K and just can't justify it it's such a shame, I'd love to do it. We'll do it big time one day. This is what it was gonna look like. Yeah, I was thinking about loading up the, one of the grain trailers on top of a 32 foot bale trailer. We'll have the full spec silage trailer there. We'll have a 26 foot low loader there with all the toys. Uh, probably do a few of our smaller items like that. Um, I really wanna make this some oil drum furniture. <laughs> And that was one of our old style weight blocks. We don't build these anymore, but we'd probably have a few tractor bumpers on the stand and we'd do a weight pulling competition. A um, bit like Top Gear with the scoreboard and see how much weight you can physically pull on a scale. But that isn't gonna happen because it's too expensive. <laughs> so, there, never mind, maybe one day, maybe next year. Trouble is, it doesn't just stop at 20K, does it? I've got to get the gear up to Birmingham, all the haulage cost. It's a week out of work, probably, with a team of people, without any lighting, without any electric. Uh, it's a shame, really. It is a shame. And I forgot the most crucial bit. I've got to build the stuff to put on the show stand. <laughs> and we're already we're busy enough we're completely round right up to Christmas uh, there's a few logging trailer conversions to do as well as new trailer builds um, I've stopped taking anywhere past Christmas because I don't know what the steel prices are doing um, could really shoot ourselves in the foot if we get that wrong so we are proudly back in farm 24 
the 24 hours in farming. Um, I'm not much of a farmer myself, but I've always worked on a farm since I was from a young age. Um, that's where I grew my love for engineering. Wherever I've gone in the world working, I've always ended up welding for some reason. I don't know why that is. As soon as I went to Australia when I was 18, I only went there to drive combines. Nope, I got put on a bloody welder. Um, then went out to America with Frederick Harveston. I had to rebuild all the header trailers before we even went anywhere with the combines. <laughs> but it's all good fun. And here we are building some really nice trailers, sending them around the world now, which is amazing. Rock and roll, guys. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I believe we have got a 26 foot low loader, JCB fast track. Yes, I think he's in fast track colors. Here, guys, over and out.